Hey YouTube, Christian Bell here. So now we know that budgets are super helpful for achieving financial goals, but which one should I choose? In this video, we're going to cover four main budget types. First, we have a percent-based budget, also called the balanced money formula. 50-30-20 budget, 60% solutions. These are all examples of percent-based budgets. The idea is you create categories, and each category represents a certain percent of your take-home pay. That's after taxes. So for the 50-30-20 budget, you would spend 50% to needs, things like how housing, food, healthcare, 30% to wants, things like travel, restaurants, entertainment, and 20% to savings and debt. That's retirement, emergency fund, student loans. Now, the percents with this approach, they don't have to match exactly. You can absolutely change them how you see fit. A big pro with this approach is that it's fairly simple to set up and follow. You don't have to be super specific with your categories. But because of this, general categories are, well, general. So it's a little harder to get specifics about what you spend your money on at a glance. This can sometimes sometimes lead to overspending, especially if you're prone to doing that. Which leads us to our second budget, called the reverse budget, or pay yourself first. This budget puts savings before immediate expenses. So you first decide how much you're going to save each month for big goals, retirement, emergency fund, house down payment, then you use the rest for bills, and then everything else. The big plus here is by paying yourself first, you guarantee that you're putting enough towards savings each month. So you don't have to worry so much about overspending, because you've already committed money to your savings goals. But maybe you want a more detailed view of where your money's going. In that case, you want our third budget, the zero-based budget. This is also called envelope budget or cash-only budget. These are different names for slightly different flavors of the same basic idea. You take all the money you have right now, that's money in your bank account balance, and not money you know will come in soon, and you split it up across all bills, debts, and savings until you have zero dollars left to split up. Then, every time you earn money, you give those dollars a job. This gives you extreme clarity on where every dollar is going. It literally makes you come face to face with just how much you're spending and on what. So this shows you, without any exaggeration, what your actual priorities are. And that's judging by where you spend your money and not what you think your priorities are. Because those might be different. I've found this self-reflection super productive to help me reprioritize what I actually want and then adjust my budget to get there. So the main idea here is give every dollar a job. A useful question to ask is, what does this money have to do before I'm paid again? Now with this approach, you do want to embrace your true expenses. Things that you pay for monthly are pretty easy to budget for. Things that you pay for less frequently, not so much. So what you can do is estimate how much you want to spend, and then you budget monthly for that. For example, my car insurance gives me the option to pay every six months, and plus there's a little discount for that. I know I have to pay that every six months, and so I budget for it monthly. Another thing is that it's super important to only add money that you've actually received, and not money that you expect to receive. This is part of what provides you with an accurate view of your money, and that forces you to be ruthless about your priorities. That's a good thing. A big benefit of zero-based budgeting is you get crystal clear clarity on where you're spending money and, by extension, what your priorities are. The downside, though, is that all this detail takes time to manage. But there are software tools that can help with that. Now, if all that sounded like way too much time and you just don't want to deal with it, there's always the no budget approach. But hold on a minute, isn't that just living paycheck to paycheck? Well, sort of. It depends on who you ask. For me, the big difference is, are you getting the benefits of budgeting, or are you suffering the consequences of living paycheck to paycheck? No budget can work for some people, but it typically works best for people who, number one, they have a fairly high income to begin with. Number two, they automate their savings and bill paying. And number three, they're more likely to underspend, not overspend. So if that's not you, maybe think twice before going the no budget route. Now these next couple aren't really budgets in my opinion, because they're not really different enough to be their own budgets. But they each do focus on a super important part of budgeting. First we have the values-based budget. This is simply spending money aligned with your values. We all only have so much money, and what we spend it on is, again, literally a vote on what's important to us. The key here is to spend money intentionally, rather than on a whim. Now, I'm guilty of this one big time. I used to spend money without any clear goals, even after I started making higher salaries, and I still felt poor. This was a big reason why. The way I was spending didn't line up with my values. I told myself that I was prioritizing saving and investing, but I was spending so much money on software tools that I really wasn't prioritizing saving. Turns out I was being dishonest with myself. It wasn't until I got serious with budgeting that this really started to sink in for me. If you don't know what you value, track your spending for a while, and pretty soon it will become very clear what you value. It's what you spend most of your money on. Next we have the automatic budget. 
and this is really about setting up automatic bill pay on all of your expenses. A big plus here is it'll help to avoid late fees, which, if you can pay the bill anyway, late fees are literally a waste of money. Plus, paying on time is quite helpful for building a better credit score. You can often choose the payment date to line up close to when you get paid, which can give you a more accurate picture of how much money you'll actually have. For me, all of my bills are on auto pay. Not only that, but I also automate my savings as well as my bills. Here we're talking about things like automatic retirement deductions for IRAs and 401ks, and automatic transfers for monthly savings. We know from psychology and marketing that we are way more likely to do something if it's automatic. So automation is an almost guaranteed way to to improve your finances. It saves me a bunch of time, and plus, it's one less thing for me to worry about. Next, we have the comprehensive or detailed budget. This is more about the level of detail you want to track in your budget. How much do you care about seeing where every single dollar is going? Some people thrive on tons of detail, like me, but it does take more time. Other people couldn't care less about the details, and they're fine with general categories. Or maybe you're somewhere in the middle. None of these approaches is right or wrong. It simply depends on what fits your personality and lifestyle. So which budget approach do you prefer? Have you tried any before? Or maybe you have another one that I didn't cover. Let me know in the comments. I hope that was helpful. Make sure to like and subscribe. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you next time.